Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another day of morning prayer. Um, at this time, let me open us up with prayer as we come before the Lord this morning. Let's pray together. Uh, dear me, Father, um, we come before your presence, uh, declaring and believing in faith uh, that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Um, God, we thank you, Lord, that you are a God of comfort, and that, God, you are a comfort to all those who mourn, and, Lord, you know... Um, our weaknesses and you know our daily struggle you know uh, the difficulties of life in which we um, experience every single day Lord and we thank you Lord that um, in the midst of everything especially that has been going on um, that you are with us and you promise us in your word um, that you would never forsake us God and um, these truths are what we hold on to it's these truths um, that we um, are grounded in and it is a firm foundation for us um, in those moments, Lord. Um, God, we just ask as we worship you today um, that we would just be reminded of the hope that we have in Jesus um, and the life that we have in you, Lord. Um, so God, we pray that during this time you would be worshiped and praised. Um, and we pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. 
where the Spirit of the Lord is. with our hurting and 
our suffering and that you are the one that brings us joy. You are the one that brings us a comfort and a peace that this world cannot bring, that cannot give and provide, Lord. So it is you that we seek this morning. It is you that we come to to be able to be healed and restored. So Lord Jesus, we pray that during this time as we listen to your word, that your word would do a healing process in each and every one of us today. We thank you for this time of worship. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed time, everyone. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us once again today. Can you believe that we are already at day 10, just about halfway there? Um, I just want to encourage you to keep going, keep praying, keep seeking the Lord every day and being in worship and being in his presence every day as we gather together. And so um, as we come together, once again, the reminder of the overall theme, live as one who proclaims the good news. And of course, it comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And let's come into his marvelous light now. Father, as we come to seek you, we pray, O oh Lord God, that you would really move in our hearts. Remind us, O oh Lord God, the opportunities that you give us to repentance. That it's you, O oh Lord God, that's leading us. It's you, O oh Lord God, that is restoring us and filling us, O oh Lord God. So come. Come and bless us. Come and cause there to be transformation within us. We thank you so much, Lord God. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you ever notice how much we grow through difficulty. I hope that that's been the case for you. That there has been a time of seeking of God because of the difficult times that we have gone through. I remember, um, you know, when I was younger, I would pray, Lord, help me to grow. Help me to grow in my faith. Help me to grow in my understanding. Help me to seek you more and hunger for you more. Uh, that would be my prayer. And then, shortly thereafter, like hardship would come, difficulty would come. And I would ask, God, why are you doing this to me? Why are you allowing me to go through this hard time? And, um, you know, the, the short answer is, that's what I prayed for. Right? It's what I prayed for. I prayed to grow and people mostly grow through struggles and through hardships. It's that realization that we hold on to as we think about the question that is asked for us today. What is the good news given to a city struck by disaster? And Pastor Ho points us to Jonah, the book of Jonah in chapter 3. But before we get into the reading, just to, as a reminder, and I'm sure most of us are very familiar with the book of Jonah because it is, you know, it's thought of as a children's story. Maybe because there's a big whale in it, um, because there's a boat. It really is not a children's story. Um, it's the story of a prophet named Jonah who is called by God to go and proclaim destruction upon Nineveh. Nineveh was the enemy of the Israelites. Jonah didn't want to go and preach destruction to Nineveh because he knew. If he goes and he warns them, they will repent and God will be gracious. And so instead of going to Nineveh, he decides he's going to go in the opposite direction to Tarshish. And this is the part of the story we all know very well. And as he's on the boat, a huge storm comes and everyone is going crazy. Everyone is praying to their gods. They wake Jonah up who was, who was asleep. And they say, look, you need to pray to your God. And then Jonah's like, I know what's going on. They cast lots to see why is this happening? 
and the lot falls on Jonah. And so he tells them, toss me over. Toss me overboard. They're so reluctant. How can we allow that to happen? It's going, you're going to die in this storm. But he knew. And so he gets tossed over. A big fish that most of us think is a whale. A big fish swallows him. And in that the belly of that big fish, he prays. He repents. And then... The big fish regurgitates him or throws him up. And then we are in Jonah chapter 3, verse 3. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When Jonah's warning reached the ears, reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. This is the proclamation he issued in Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles. Let not, do not let people nor animals, herds or flock taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and he did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. Amen. See, the good news is that God is a God who relents. But you know what else? He does so in a predictable way. And God is so gracious that we can count on His graciousness. God is so merciful that we can count on it. These Ninevites, they go through a time of true and genuine repentance. And that's something that I want us to realize. That it wasn't just a, a show for God. Where they just pretended to be in repentance. But they took heed of the word. And they responded to the word in mourning. And in genuine repentance. And that's the good news. That when we repent before God. There is mercy that's offered. So hear that again. When we repent before God, there is mercy that is offered in the person of Jesus Christ. You see, we, each one of us, are the Ninevites. We, each one of us, are just like these Ninevites. We, are lo we were lost in our sin. Book of Romans told us that the wages of those of that sin is death. It's like it's like Jonah proclaiming 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. Paul professing the wages of sin is death. It's the same as Jonah warning the Ninevites. 40 more days. And Nineveh will be overthrown. And that means that we also. Must respond in the same way. The Ninevites believed God. They believed him. They began. 
to fast. And they began to put on sackcloth. They began to sit down in the dust. They began to mourn over their sinfulness. They began to repent. They began to take their sin seriously began to seek the mercy of God. That's the good news. That when we seek out God's mercy, truly, earnestly seek out God's mercy, God's mercy never fails. The grace of God never fails. Whenever we as sinners, admit before him our need for his grace. Not just lightheartedly, but earnestly. God extends that hand of mercy in the person of Jesus Christ. And he relents. Let's read that again. When God saw what they did, and how they turned from their evil ways. He relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. What is the good news to a destroyed city? To a city facing destruction? The good news is that he sends his messengers to give a warning. Those messengers are you and I. Those messengers are the people of God that are called to go and proclaim the good news that though we are sinners, there is hope that though the wages of sin is death, the gift of God is eternal life. And we find that through faith. We find that by putting our hope in Jesus Christ. We find that by turning from our evil ways and turning to our God, our Father. Turning from sin. Turning to our God through Jesus. The movement of the Holy Spirit. That's the good news. But no greater news could ever be shared than that. We deserve death. We deserve destruction, just like these Nineveh's. And grace is offered to us, just like these Nineveh's. And we receive that grace through the person of Jesus Christ by faith. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we have the good news of salvation through Jesus. And we admit to you, O Lord God, that we are undeserving of it. We admit to you, O Lord God, that we are guilty of sin. And Lord God, we know that the wages of sin is death. And so, Lord God, we cling to the gift of God of eternal life through Jesus Christ. Help us, O oh Lord God, to live out that truth. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. But we are so undeserving and you give so freely. Thank you, Lord. And all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you once again. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.